Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and I bring to you a pair of feet. Well, I do, but these feet in particular belong to what are called the Manus Mortis Gorebringers from Atlan Forge. Now, we've had quite a few Atlan Forge models on this channel before, but that's just because I'm a sucker for them. I love them. Uh, they're big, they're thick, and as the kids describe them, they're chonky, and I think these are the first that I've seen that they've actually had to hollow out just due to how big and thick they are. So you can see here, uh, we are definitely not dealing with the most loyal of powered armored warriors. Yep. Kind of elephant-like hoof feet. Well, not hoofs, but you know what I mean. Got these hands going out of the into the face. A couple of different variations. Another pair here. That might just be reversed. I got a couple more we'll show you. And then the torsos. Torsos are just as fun. Uh, very clunky. And again, these are already hollowed out. I mean, I guess you could. I don't even know if you could print them unhollowed. Maybe there was an option for it. Maybe there wasn't. There's also, there were three different variations, I believe. I'll show you the third one in just a little bit. This one's got like hands growing off of it. More organic steam vents on the top. More hands on the bottom as well. Now, what was interesting, and I haven't seen these on their models before, but they did some nice little gut plates. And these are actually completely optional. You don't have to put them on, but you can. So we have one with either putrid wounds or I'm thinking maybe eyeballs even and what they do is you'll see here there's these angles on it what you do is those angles match up to the curvature of the torso so it all just clicks together like that and then you can plop your torso on top and have his belly covered up you don't have to do that they work totally fine without it like a lot of the other models that they've made. Some fun variations with hands coming out of it. Let's see, there might have been a third one, I don't remember now. And then one thing I've noticed, and we've had similar, if you've built any of Atlan Forge's bigger, heavier infantry Terminator style models, they have these cowls that actually need to slide in hopefully in focus, after you attach the head. Speaking of heads, do I have any around? I was kind of worried about these guys. They've got crazy horns and protrusions jutting out of their faces. Uh, I was really concerned that that was going to be an issue, getting those heads in there. Some are worse than others in that regard. There are non-crusty heads as evidenced by this one. I'm gonna need a little bit more cleanup there and also have to get it in focus as a fly is buzzing around my face here. Go away. And let's see, the arms. Uh, the arms didn't stand out as anything really different out of the ordinary. If you've got any of their other uh, heavy infantry Terminator style kits, you'll have plenty of those arms already. One of the new ones I found though was this mounted poison spewer thing and then you'll just glue the hand in right there. I mean they're, they're nothing other than the fact that I need to clean them up better. I think extraordinarily different than what's already been released. A couple of the shoulder pad armors. Nice and big and spiky. And I'm showing off all these into individual pieces because one of the nice things about Atlan Forge's models is they are completely modular. If you have one kit, you can absolutely bash it together with another, just like I'm bashing the camera right now. And then we get to the real highlight of the kit. And there are these uh, vent-focused canister ones as well. We've got giant buzzsaw concrete cutters and now what's interesting is if I am understanding correctly I think these are actually supposed to plug in to the 
spots on the torsos. I could be wrong, but it really looks like that's what they're supposed to do. And then we have some big bad signs. Now, both of the weapon options do have the ability to be mounted onto the model with either one or two-handed options. I tried with the two-handed and I did not do a good job gluing. And actually, let's talk about the gluing because I've already glued some together I wanted to show off. Okay. So you can see here, as I was saying, I was very concerned that the head was going to absolutely block that cowl, but it turned out all right. So you can see here, he's, he's got a pretty good heft in my hand here. And as I was mentioning, that little broad shaft pipe, whatever it is, really did seem to line up nicely with the spot on his back. Is it supposed to? Beats me. Do I need to do a better job cleaning these? Absolutely. Does it work though? Yeah, I think so. But that's not even the cool one. <laughs> well, I mean it is, but it's not the cooler one. So another of the options, and I gotta also mention, uh, this is the model I was trying to put the two-handed version of the scythe on, and these vents here got in the way of the shoulder pads, so be wary of that. What I learned after fiddling around with these is that you might want to actually glue the shoulder pads down first and then insert the arms afterwards. It worked out a little bit easier for me. And I'll show you the other one I built. This is the third torso option, which I ended up snapping at bits and pieces of. They're supposed to be like piles of skulls hanging off of this. And you can see this hand motif is really in full swing here. I like how he's got the kind of trophy rack arch thing. And then he's got the cape. Now this is interesting. This cape is actually two separate parts. And you can see the horrid gluing and, uh, I can't think of the word, <laughs> puttying job I did there to try to get it nice and smooth. Uh, the thing was, so this part where you see that joint is actually where they separate. So I screwed around with this, trying to get things to line up, and finally that's when I realized, you know what, it's probably easier to actually glue this alt onto the body and then try attaching the arms, and it worked out much nicer. So funny thing is, I gotta say, the Gorblites, or was, I think that was what they were called, the, you know, inspiration for these things, the, the 40K inspiration, uh, were some of my favorite models, and that was one of those models that I got an offer too good to refuse that I ended up helping <laughs> support our channel here, so I had to take advantage of it. And I'm, you can see here from the size, that that's about the size I expect, you know, a Terminator-style heavy infantry unit to be. And the other thing that I love is that it really compares nicely with a lot of the other big dudes that Atlan Forge has made with some of the other chaos styled bad guy variations, if you will. And you can see just the three of them, they are all quite distinct in their armor, their weaponry. Uh, I really like that. I think that's a cool touch that they have really continued to embellish as their lines have grown. Some of the more loyalist style ones. And again, you can see here that there's just very unique styles and honestly, everything here is compatible with each other. So if you really wanted to go wild mixing and matching, I was thinking one of these Gorebringers might look kind of cool with the, it's like the Hades Assault Thanatoy or something uh, with their big old power clawed claws as opposed to the more blade-like ones of the shark dudes or the Minoans. I believe that's what they were called. If you wanted to just use these as generic bad guys in some other setting, I guess. Whee! With the Reaper, WizKids, and Stargrave model, you can see they're going to be pretty big guys. I've got them sitting on a 40 millimeter base. If you wanted to go bigger, you probably could. Smaller, I don't think that's going to be really doable. So, uh, in summation, I gotta say, yet another fun kit from Atlan Forge. We'll have a link down below if you want to check out their stuff. 
uh, will have their back catalog on my mini factory link down below as well as their patreon where it's always going to be a surprise as to whatever shows up week after week but that's half the fun of this stuff so with that said this has been high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon bye bye